All right, that was good work. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. I'm so glad to be filming because I've had this video idea in my head for a month now and then life got insane and so I keep putting it off, but I'm here now to talk about the top 10 classics I wanna read in 2020. Yes, the title matches the video topic. <laughs> So some of these books are rereads for me, um, ones that I just need a re-experience, but most of them are ones I have never read before, but are often talked about in my graduate classes, which make me feel super behind. So this is some like for pleasure, but also for some preparedness. You know what I'm saying? You get it. Some of it's for school so that I'm better equipped and then others are just for fun. So yeah, these are the top 10 classics I'm gonna read in 2020. And since it's February, I thought I'd just read one a month for the rest of the year. So let's get into it. So the first book I wanna talk about is The Odyssey by Homer. Have you heard of this one? No? Interesting, cause it's pretty popular. Um, <laughs> I've never read The Odyssey and that's, I'm going to blame the public school system in California because they hired horrible English teachers when I was in high school. And um, my only good English teacher in high school was my senior year. And she, funnily enough, taught mythology, but did not teach the Odyssey. So the Odyssey, why do I wanna read it? Well, it's a classic, so it suits this video, uh, but also it's one of those books that is overarching through all other literature that we read in grad school. It is one of those myths. I mean, it's an epic and it is in every single class that I'm in. Maybe not every week that I'm in that class, but it comes up in every single class and it is alluded to in all literature. And there's always like, it's always poetically like strung in through like a long discourse about something else and you're like what does that mean and I would understand it if I had read this book so um, I want to read this this year and it's gonna be a time and I'm excited so that's the first one apparently it has something to do with mythology let me know if I'm right <laughs> The second classic I wanna read in 2020 is Dracula by Bram Stoker. Bram Stoker? I don't know. Bram sounds more Irish to me. This guy, Dracula, I'll just say that. You know what I'm talking about. There's a vampire in it and it's all told through letters, I understand. Um, and apparently it's wonderful and super creepy and I've never read it. And I feel like a horror fanatic fraud when I say I've never read this before. So it's been on my shelf forever. It's the prettiest copy I've ever seen in my life and it's on my list. So I'll let you know how this one goes. I'm very excited. I feel like I should wait till Halloween, but then I also feel like, ooh, Ooh, you're a cliche, sis. So I might read it before then, but this is on the 2020 list. Next, keeping with the gothic trope, we're gonna go into Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I've already read this book and it is one of my all time favorites. I love it so much. And so I just wanna reread it. I just wanna go enjoy it once again in life. I think it is so good. And if you have not read it, you really don't know it. And that's the truth. Like everyone, I think we all know the story of Frankenstein or we all think we know the story of Frankenstein and we think he's this green guy with bolts in his neck. And that cannot be further from the truth. Frankenstein is the doctor, um, but also the monster has a heart. He has a soul. He just wants friends. He wants to be accepted and he's not. And that's why he turns into a murderer. So um, this book is fantastic. I loved it when I read it the first time and I think I'll love it even more the second time because this time I'll just be able to eat, just read it at ease and with love. And <laughs> is this making sense? I don't think so, but I know what I mean and that's what counts. So I'm excited to reread this one. The next book I'd like to read in 2020 is Villette by Charlotte Bronte. Um, I read Jane Eyre as one literature student does and fell in love, claimed it as one of my top books of all time. Actually my favorite of all time, not sure if that's still true, but Jane Eyre had a hold on my heart when I read it. And whenever I talk to someone in academia and I say like, mm, Jane Eyre, love it. Then they usually follow it up with, have you read Villette? And I'm like, no. And then they go, it's better than Jane Eyre. And I'm like, then why have I not heard about it? Hmm? 
So I actually got, I don't even know how far I got, but I got like halfway through this book and then it somehow ended up on my shelf. <laughs> so I was enjoying it and then I put it away and I don't know why, maybe it was cause it was, I think it was like over summer vacation or something. So like my brain was just not in governess mindset. Um, but I'd like to actually read it this year and say that I have read it and see if my opinions match those of the other people I know. Um, so yeah, that's that. <laughs> Next up, we have Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. I have never read Charles Dickens. Let me correct myself. I have read chapter one of Bleak House by Charles Dickens. <laughs> and um, Dickens is another author that is talked about in every class I take. And every class I take, I go, Dickens, you mean that fair I go to every winter in, in San Francisco? You mean the one where you, you know, get <laughs> you mean the fair? You, there's there's a thing called the Dickens Fair in San Francisco. That's what I'm going with. But that's all I know about Charles Dickens, aside from The Christmas Carol, which I only ever grew up on the one with Jim Carrey, which is terrifying. So that's all I know of Dickens. And it's, again, an author that's always talked about. I really want to read this, but first I have to read Bleak House. But notice that Bleak House was not on my top 10 because I'm not excited for it. <laughs> The next book I'd like to read in 2020 is Thomas Hardy's Tess of a word. Tess of the the Herbervilles. I'll look that up. Let's do it together, folks. How do you pronounce this? How do you pronounce Skip Trial YouTube Premium? I don't give a f Derbervilles. 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 Tess of Derbervilles. I got it, yes, okay. So I have never read this before. I read Jude the Obscure last semester and uh, my heart was ripped out of my chest cavity. It was horrifyingly tragic and really sad. And you just feel for Jude the whole time. And Sue Bridehead is incredible. So after I read Jude the Obscure, I was, I was, warring with myself on, did you like that or did you hate that? I loved the writing, but I hated what Tom, Thomas Hardy, Tom Hardy, like we're friends. I hated what Hardy did to my soul and to my heart and what he did to Jude. I'm still upset that he could do that to someone, someone like Jude, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I posted about reading that book and I was like, my heart is shattered. And my friend Hannah from high school, great friend of mine, love her to death. She said, if that wrecked you, you should read Tess of Durbervilles. And she's like, cause that one will wreck you. And despite the fact that I'm talking about how much Jude wrecked me, I love when a book shatters me. So I'm ready for this. Don't really know what it's about. I think it's about a woman that gets abandoned by two different men. And I don't know within which context, is it romantic? Is it fatherly? Is it friendship? I don't know, but I know that she seeks revenge and it's supposed to be a crazy time. So I'm ready for this and I'm ready to cry. <laughs> so the next three novels I'd like to read are all rereads and they're all by Jane Austen. First, let's talk about this. Uh, my mom got me this for Valentine's day and it is beautiful. I, I'm not gonna show you the front cause my mom wrote me a note in it. <laughs> Uh, but look at this, oh, wow. Anyway, we've got gold pages. It's just delectable. <laughs> um, so I have technically read all of Jane Austen's novels, but two of these books, couldn't tell you what they're about. Don't know anything. That's not true. I know one of them. Anyway, let's just get into it. So the first book I wanna read from this is Pride and Prejudice. Uh, I was about to say by Jane Austen, but we know what we're talking about. So here's the scoop on me. I do not reread books. I'm not a rereader. I'm not into it. I don't know what it is. So that's why I put some rereads on the list because I do wanna push myself to reread books that I know I love so I can re-experience them and get other things out of them. In any case, I have actually reread Pride and Prejudice twice already. So I've read it twice. So I guess I've only reread it once. Um, the last time I reread novels aside from Pride and Prejudice was, clock me, 
the Twilight series in 2009. So aside from that, I'm not a rereader. And so the fact that I'm about to read Pride and Prejudice for the third time is insanity. But it's just one of those books that's like scratching at me. You know what I'm saying? It's saying like, you need, you need to do this. So I'm gonna try to do it in 2020. I don't know, I'm feeling some Lizzie Bennet. I just need it in my life. You know, if you don't know what Pride and Prejudice is, where have you been? Um, <laughs> it's basically uh, the Bennett family and it has, there's five sisters, no sons. So the mom's mission in life is to marry off all her daughters and match them with rich suitors. And um, it's hilarious how the mom does it. It's frustrating how the mom does it. And it's just wonderful. Lizzie Bennett, the second oldest daughter is She's strong-minded, she's outspoken, she's beautiful, she's intelligent, she's wonderful, I love her, and she's a joy to read, um, and she finds a match who is not quite what you'd think, and I'm excited to read Pride and Prejudice. So that's the first Austen novel. The second is Persuasion by Jane Austen. <laughs> I did it again. Um, Persuasion is my mom's favorite no Austin novel, and her and I just watched the movie the other day, the other week, I'm not gonna lie to you. And what I know of Persuasion, again, I took a Jane Austen course, so I should know all about these novels, and I don't. Um, Persuasion, let me give it to you. Uh, there's a woman who was in love with a man, I don't know the woman's name, like seven years ago and they were gonna get married and they were all in love. And then the, her aunt, I think, is like, bad match, don't do it. And she's like, heard, sis. <laughs> so she doesn't marry him um, and she's heartbroken and she's always loved him and she hasn't gotten over him. And then he shows up in town um, and there's some resentment and some weirdness and some awkward moments. And the whole time you're just like, say how you feel, it's gonna be fine. Everything will be fine. You're charming and you're beautiful and everything will work out. Um, but that's not how it always goes. So yeah, I'm really excited to read Persuasion again. Um, and yeah, make my mom happy. And then the last book, so I have this big kahuna, but I did just buy this version of, hi, that was a book. Um, mom, it's fine. It did not break, if you can believe it. <laughs> Um, so I have that big book, but I wanted to buy, I've always loved these versions of Austin's novels. I love these covers. Um, and so I bought Northanger Abbey, mainly because it keeps getting talked about in my um, class this semester. It was mentioned like five times in one class. And I was like, I don't know what this novel is about, though I supposedly read it. So I know that this is the most Gothic of Austin's novels and that the heroine, let me read the back, no one would have supposed her born to be an heroine. I would say a heroine, interesting. I won't fight her on this, but I'm not sure that's right. Maybe it is. Um, yeah, I don't really know anything about it. I just know it keeps getting talked about. So it's on my list and it's super short and I love this cover and I'm gonna read it. Um, also, I miscounted. <laughs> I'm supposed to do 10 in this video and I think I've only talked about nine. So I'm gonna pull another one out of the hat and that is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I'll just get it. It is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Um, I have tried reading this book twice now and it's a slow bitch. I mean, wait, it's a slow burn. Um, I've gotten admittedly to page 12. So I'm really giving it my best effort. I loved the 2019 version with Saoirse Ronan and Timothy Chalamet and all of them. I, oh, I was moved. I fell in love. Um, so I, me and my mom actually went and saw the movie and then immediately went to two different bookstores to find a version of uh, Little Women. Then we both brought our versions home and didn't read them. So um, I'm gonna put this on my list for this year. I hear that the book is spectacular and wonderful and so cozy and beautiful. And so I know I want to read it, but since the movie was so well done, when I've started this book twice now, it gets a little sluggish to me. Again, I've only made it to page 12, so I actually need to give it a real try, but there you have it, you guys. Oh, Little Women, it's about four little women. 
They're super small. They're like little leprechauns. No, um, they're just four sisters um, and living their lives. It's actually a really basic plot and I was moved to tears. So I'm excited to read this. And that's what I have to say on that that one. So um, those are the books, you guys. Those are the 10 classics I'd like to read in 2020. Again, if you have suggestions for ones you think I definitely need to read, let me know. And if I've already read them, let's have a conversation about it. I'm so down. Uh, but yeah, that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye!